In this video, I'm going to show you recording audio in Reaper 7. So I'm starting off with a new project. I want to record some audio into it. So we can double click over here to create a new track. Let's give it a name. I'm going to record a guitar into this. So we name it guitar. I'm also going to add a track color to this. So we'll go up here to the track menu, to track color, and choose set tracks to custom color. And I'll choose this blue color right here. Hit OK. Now the track is this color. Then we're going to record on this track and set our input where my guitar is plugged into on my audio interface. I'm using input one, so I'll set it to input one right here. Then we have the guitar player play and see our level on the meter. Right now the level is a bit low. I like to make it somewhere between 18 and 12 dB. It's a bit too low. So I'm going to go to the computer audio interface and bring up the input a bit. Have him play again. Now it's a bit too loud. As I said, I want to set it between minus 18 and minus 12, which will give us some headroom. So we're not going to clip no matter how hard he plays. So I'm going to bring it down on the computer audio interface a bit. Have him play again. That looks perfect. Somewhere between minus 18 and minus 12. So now we're ready to record our part. I'm going to change the tempo to be 89 beats per minute. And I'm going to turn on the metronome right here in the toolbar. So now if we go into record, we'll hear a click track and we can play along to it. Now we can trigger record by hitting this button or we can use a keyboard shortcut. On PC, it's Control R and on Mac, it's Command R. Hit it to go into record. Now you notice when we stop recording, by default, Reaper opens up this dialog where we could choose to save what we recorded or delete it or rename it. Now, if you find this dialog a bit intrusive every time you record a part, we could turn it off right here. And this won't show up anymore in the future. Save it. And a part is right here. We'll turn off the metronome and listen to it from here. Now, if you notice, when a guitar player plays the part, we could hear it. That's because of the monitoring modes. If we go up here to this icon and right click it, here are the monitoring modes we could choose. By default, monitor input is turned on, which is why we're hearing the guitar. But we could turn it off right here, change the icon to look like this, and now if he plays the guitar, we don't hear it. It'll still record to our track, and we could play it back and hear it then, but we're not going to hear it while we're recording. In other words, while monitoring. And this is useful if we're using direct monitoring. If your computer audio interface has that feature, you might want to monitor directly from your interface, which will reduce latency completely, but you won't hear the audio through the track. We'll still hear it in playback, but while he's recording, we won't. It'll show up on the meter, but of course, you'll hear it through your interface if you're using direct monitoring. So that's the purpose of turning this off. But there's still another monitoring mode we could use. This one right here, monitor input tape auto style. If we choose this, the icon looks like this, and we can switch modes just by clicking the button. This is monitoring off, this is monitoring on, and this is monitoring tape auto style in red. And when this is on, we're still going to hear our guitar in input. But we're not going to hear it in playback 
And once we're in, record. So I play my track and play the guitar. We don't hear the guitar. Unless we punch in first. And that's the purpose of this mode. Let's say we want to re-record this phrase right here. So we want to punch it in. So right over here, I'll hit that keyboard shortcut and hit it again over here to punch out. And let's notice what happens. Notice we only heard the live guitar on input and we punched in over here. We didn't hear it over here or over here. Let's hear the difference. We'll put this back to input monitoring. And now over here, before we punch in, we're going to hear two guitars at the same time. Our input guitar and the guitar already recorded. Check it out. Notice we heard two guitars. We're basically hearing the input and also what we recorded previously. So as you can tell, it makes more sense to choose monitor input tape auto style when we punch in. So we only hear the guitar when it's punched in, like this. Now we only heard our input guitar right over here. We heard playback over here, and over here, which makes more sense when we punch in and punch out our guitar, which is the purpose of monitor input tape auto style. Now, if you notice, when we punched in, we created takes. This is take one, and this is take two. And to hear back this take, just click it. Now we're going to hear this take instead of this one. <laughs> Or we could switch it to this one by clicking it. Or we could use the T key. Hit T to switch the takes based on the section where our mouse is placed. And if you prefer take two and you want to delete the other one, just double click the track to select all the audio, right click it, go to takes, and choose crop to active take. And that deletes the other take, leaving us with just the take we want. But we could also record without using takes. Let's undo this. And we're back to the original performance. Let's say we want to punch in that same section. But we don't want to create takes. We can go up here to the options menu on the new recording that overlaps existing media items and change it from creating takes, which is the default, to trim existing items or tape mode. And if we choose this, Reaper's not going to create takes. It's just going to punch in in this section on top of the previous audio. So let's try that. So now, instead of creating takes, we just punched in this section. So if you know, you don't want to choose from different takes, you can just punch in in this tape mode. And even after recording and punching in any of these modes, we could edit the punches just like this. As Reaper is always recording, so we're not going to lose anything. Or we could trim it back to create some crossfades and adjust those as well to make our punches sound better. So that's how we could do this without takes. Now, because of the length of this video, I've divided it into two parts. Check out Recording Audio Part 2 next. So that's pretty much it. That's Recording Audio in Reaper 7. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.